Uh, say a man who might have shed a tear as well today is Jason McAteer. Jason, good afternoon. Hey, John. How are you? Yeah, tough day, Jason. It was, mate, yeah. Um, obviously got up this morning and you, know, you look at the phone, don't you, see what's going on. And had a couple of random texts um, really breaking the news, to be honest. And then uh, and then you're right, you know, a few tears were shared and, you know, absolutely devastated, to be honest. I think it's a bit more prevalent because we've been doing quite a few documentaries over the last probably six months with, with a couple of companies in Ireland and, you know, been reminiscing about times. And, you know, Jack was very much at the forefront of, of those documentaries and the stories. So it was all pretty fresh of, of all their memories and even, you know, just catching up with the lads as we do. As you know, we're very close, Aldo and Ronnie and all the Irish lads, Ray. And, you know, we always ask, has anyone spoke to Jack? I was Jack. And, you know, it was just, um, yeah, I'm still not over it, to be fair. I feel a little bit broken, to be honest. Yeah, sorry, Jason. What was he like as a man? Um, well, I, I think, you know, he's, he's such an imposing figure. He's got this aura. He had this aura about him. Like, you know, when he walked into a room, you knew he was there. Um, big, imposing figure, six foot four. Um, sure, the accent, as you know, but, you know, when he spoke, everyone listened. But, he had, you know, I, I, I had a great relationship with him, you know, John. I always felt he had a... You know, I, I, always, I always thought that was one of his favourites, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I know it sounds mad, but he, he used to, like, give me this wink and smile at me all the time and put his arm around me and stuff. And, you know, I, I really felt like a strong bond to him, to be honest. I, I was only with him as, obviously, manager in 94, and, and then he finished around 96, didn't he? So, you know, it was only a few years, but obviously we stayed in touch and stuff. And, you know, he, he, was, just, he was just a top man, mate. He was just, you know, I remember him giving me a... You know, a few times he called me to his room. You know, one was to, I, I remember the, the two significantly ones was, was when uh, the World Cup in 94, where he called me to his room and told me I was playing against Norway and not to be messing around and get some sleep. And, um, yeah, that was that was a special moment. And remembering all the lads thinking Guinness in the room when I knocked on the door, that was funny. And, and then the other one was when I, when I just sort of come into the squad before we went to, to America. We had a couple of friendlies and um, I remember he gave me a start and, I knocked the ball inside a couple of times. I remember him going mad on the touchline. And then we got back to the hotel. I got a call. I was getting ready to go out with the lads. I was ironing my shirt. And I got a call. And it was a Jack saying, come down to my room. I want to speak to you. And I went down. He gave me the biggest rollicking, John. Just about passing the ball inside. You ever pass the ball inside to me? One more time. He said, that'll be it. You won't play for me again. You've got to take it on board. You've got to be quick. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was quite upset because like, to be told off by the manager and Jack was one thing. And then he just went to me, just give me a cuddle. He went, enjoy your night tonight. Like, <laughs> and I just walked off. He just had a big smile on my face, and I just bounced out of his room. But, I, I, yeah, he was just an infectious character, and he was a real man's man. You know, you, you could go to him and talk to him. His door was always open, and um, he was just a lovely, lovely fella. That's a great insight into the psychology of man management, isn't it? And, and just how, as a, as a guy who was just earthy, that was able to get the best out of you, um, a kick in the backside and a, and a pat on the back at the same time, and uh, exactly. that, that makes you a lovable guy, you know. Mate, I mean, you know, the most successful managers are, you know, are all well equipped in the man management role of, of the job. Um, and Jack was, you know, second to none. You know, he had a way of playing. It was difficult for me, you know, to play his kind of philosophy and tactics because I was, you know, from Liverpool where you you don't give the ball away. You know, keeping the ball was paramount, but Jack was. You know, you get it, and you pump it up the pitch 60 yards, and you, you get up behind it. I mean, in some ways, he, you know, we talk about the high press now. Jack was doing it back in 88. You know, the high press, pump the ball up, win the ball in an area where you can hear people and get in the box with a big man or whoever it was. And, you know, that was his, that was his game, and it worked the trees. But some of us did find it difficult. But, you know, he gave you time. Um, he was patient with, with, with his players. Um and yeah, it was just it was just an absolute privilege to, to be around the squad from, from obviously ninety four going to the World Cup and up until ninety six. Ninety six was, was sad because, you know, he was he was he knew he was on his way out. He knew his time was up, you know, to, to rejuvenate a squad was was gonna be very difficult around that time and it was sad that the Holland game at Anfield was was really, really sad. You know, it was a, a, a you know, sad night. But, you know, just being around you know, the squad from 94 and going to the World Cup and being with them and listening to the stories of the lads, what they tell from 90 and 88, you know, it's just, you know, it's just brilliant. He's, he's a sad loss, mate. He's a, oh, he's a big loss. 
and also change people's lives, Jason. People who go to the Giant Stadium will never forget that, Irish people. Exactly, mate. I mean, it's just it, it's not just what he did for us on a personal level. He's what he, he did for Ireland. You know, the economy boom from from what the squads were doing around that time. You know, just the way he handled people, the way he was. And let's not forget, he won the he won the World Cup for England. You know, I mean, winning the World Cup is one thing, but then managing a different country and having been from England, it was going to be tough enough. But he was quickly taken on board. Um, he quickly won people around, and you know, people then, you know, he was just he was Irish. Money people didn't don't look at him any other way now. Um, and we used to laugh and joke and say he could be Prime Minister of Ireland, no problem. You know, he'd, he'd get all the votes and, you know, he was that infectious and people loved him that much that he could run for that role and I'm sure he'd do a good job of it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's just loved. He's just loved all over, just not, not just in football, but in life. Yeah, and before you were called up, Jason, in, in for 94, I, I doubt you would have dreamed that what have happened to you did happen with the World Cup in the USA and that. And Jack had a big part in that, making you feel welcome and feel part of it. Absolutely, mate. That's why, you know, I'm so devastated, you know, for someone like Jack to leave an imprint on my life that he did. You know, it, it, you know it's going to take a while to get used to it, but it is what it is. And, you know, it's sad. But, yeah, I mean, the day, you know, I got asked to play for England and I wanted to play for Ireland and, when Bruce Rayoff made the call, you know, Jack came down and watched me play against Everton in the FA Cup. I'll never forget it. You know, I knew he was at the ground. I wanted to impress him. And then I went into the players' lounge and he made a beeline to me. He was with his son, John, at the time. And he, he made a beeline to me. I was with my mum and my nan. And he came over. He just said, I want you to represent the Republic of Ireland against Russia, Lansdowne Road. And it was, I was just overcome. Like, it was just, not only that Jack Charlton, but I've got my opportunity. And, you know, I, although I was never, I was never really likely to go to the World Cup in 94 due to a couple of injuries and you know Jack wanted to inject a bit of youth into the squad with me Gary and Phil you know um, we had to work hard in the in the in the games that preceded the, the tournament and you know the Germany game over in Hanover where he was so made up with the three of us and then um, you know I think I think it says in his book that we booked our place on the plane after that game he, he made his mind up he was going to take us and then just the way he handled us you know I, I actually didn't think I was going to get I was going to get any chance of, of playing in that World Cup. I thought, you know, number 21 and, you know, being in that squad, I just thought I was going to be, you know, there for the ride and enjoy it and get some experience. But then when he tells me you're going on against Italy, you know, to have faith in a, in a young lad that had been playing for Marine non-league football three years previous and he wants to throw me on against Italy in the World Cup on the biggest stage, you know, just tells you how much faith he had in me and, and I wanted to repay him, you know, and I, I'd run through a brick wall for him and... Um, you know, and then obviously I started the game against Norway. And, you know, to have them memories as I've got older and, and talk about it and reminisce just puts a smile on my face. But it's definitely tinged with sadness today, mate. Was he, uh, this, I, I guess he was exactly the same in the dressing room, Jason, as what you'd see on TV or, or in any interviews, that it would just just give the instructions, what you see is what you get. Was that the case? Oh, mate, that, that's him. That, that was Jack. You know, there was no air and graces. It, you know, he had something to say, he'd say it. You know, he was an emotional guy. You know, he was very emotional. And, um, you know, the way he treated us and as a squad and as, as men, you know, as, as footballers, you know, it just his training sessions were just a joy. And, and to be fair, John, I, you know, I'll tell you what sums it up. You don't, you don't have to play for your country. It, it's an honour. You, you know, you get asked to go. You don't have to go and play. It's not like a club where you're contracted and you're paid and that's your job. You know, it's a great honour and it's the greatest honour to go and play. But, you know, a lot of players don't get on with managers or they don't want to play for one reason or another. We could not wait to go and play for Jack. Mick McCarthy was the same. We couldn't wait to, to get on that plane and fly to Dublin and, and go and play for Jack and spend five days in each other's company. And, you know, that's a testament to, to how he treated us, that we couldn't wait to get there for him. You know, we used to join up on the Sunday. We'd have a couple of pints in the bar and he'd come in and then we'd have a night out. We'd all get to bit together, camaraderie. And then Monday would be the pitches. Tuesday, we'd have an early night. Wednesday, we'd go and win. No, we'd, we'd win a lot of games under Jack. Thursday, we'd fly back to our clubs, and we used to we used to say to each other when we were together, like, and we're gutted we're not a club team. We were gutted that we 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 weren't playing in the Premier League as a team because um, it was just the, it was just the best time. It was just you know we had the best squad and the best manager. It was yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely devastated. And you wouldn't have had a Robbie Keane possibly or a Damien Duff in the team and these young players coming through like John O'Shea without the legacy of Italia 90, USA 94. And that's what we need in, in the country, isn't it? We need to be getting to World Cups like Jack did and, and giving the young lads inspiration. Absolutely. I mean, 
you know, it was a golden generation of football for Ireland, and thanks to Jack and and the players involved, you know, from '88, you know, beating England, and then '90 going to Italy, quarterfinals. It, you know, unfortunately getting beat by the Italians, but it was glamorous, wasn't it? It was everyone was watching us, and then '94, England obviously hadn't qualified, so we were, we, you know, we were everyone's favourites, and you know, as young kids growing up. You know, I was a big Liverpool fan, so obviously all going Ronnie and Ray and Stan, everyone playing for Ireland. I was always watching Ireland. So, you know, it was very fashionable and it was a great team and you could see the team spirit and how, how the lads played and the camaraderie. So obviously, I, you know, being a footballer, lucky enough, I wanted to be a part of that. Um, but obviously, like you just said there, you know, as generations go, you've, you've got to aspire to, to wanting to play for your country, but you want to be doing it in, in World Cups and in major championships and that's where we aspire to be, and you know that the manager is a big part of that because, like I said, you, you don't have to go and play. You know, you, you've got to want to go and play, and, and the manager breathes that in the squad, and you've got to want to go and do it for him and, and run through brick walls, and that's what certainly, certainly Mick and, and especially Jack had. Did you keep in touch with Jack much over the years after he, he left? It was difficult, mate, because obviously his, yeah, you know, his health was deteriorating over the last probably. As far as I can remember, probably, you know, five, eight years. I've always remembered people, you know, when I ask about Jack saying, oh, he's not too good, or, yeah, he's, he's on the mend, or he's, he's taking a step backwards. It's always that kind of that kind of answer, really. But we, we had a reunion, um, I think it was, it was about 18 months ago, we had a reunion, and everybody turned up, and Jack turned up, and obviously you could see, you know, he, he was at, he'd aged, you know, he was eight, 85 years, isn't he? So... You know, he would have been around 83, 84, but you could, he, he was frail, he looked frail, and but he still had that grin, he still gave me that cheeky wink, and um, you know, that that lit it up for me, that, you know, that was a very special moment, but it, it was just testament that the people that went, everyone who got the invite was there, because they all wanted to see him, because um, obviously he was up in the northeast and he didn't venture out much um, because of his health, but, you know, that night, you know, everyone turned up because he knew he was going to be there, and yeah, we turned up. He didn't let anyone down, and it was just—it was just amazing to see him. But I, I can tell you now, every time you get together with one of us, everyone will say, "Have you spoke to Jack? Have you found out Jack all right?" You know, it was the first thing on everyone's on everyone's mind whenever we got together. But everyone wanted to know how he was. Well, Jason, you're an absolute gentleman to join us on off the ball Saturday here Thanks, on News Talk and um, sharing your memories with Jack on a very sad day. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks for having me on.